military has always tried to recruit as much as it can out of Texas, saying they found in combat and operations, Texans on average, uh, uh, you know, make the best soldiers. And then it's, I notice it's Texans so much that are resisting the New World Order, but it was Texans that also killed Kennedy, who also do really nasty stuff. So dark side and light side, Texas seems to be a real crossroads, and now Texas is opposing so much of the New World Order. You're a classic Texan, go way back. You're a Texas, you know, just standard great Texas guy. What do you think about Texas before we go to break? Uh, well, Texas is it. I, I, I'm like you, Alex. I've traveled the world. I've been to Tibet. I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Europe, I've been to Canada, I've been all over. And there's some prettier places. There's some very picturesque places, but I've never found a place in the world that I think measures up to Texas. Texas, we've got it all. And uh, we've, we've got beaches, we got mountains, we got forests, we got plains, we got... But the people, too, because if you go back and to Texas we have history... people, yes. And you go back to the people who broke away from Mexico, and I'm not talking about the white settlers. I'm talking about Juan Seguin and the Hispanic people that lived here. And I know, I don't know, at least in my life growing up in Texas, uh, everybody got along. Everything's good. And you mentioned some of the bad stuff that came, like Kennedy, okay? Uh, let me tell you something. Some, some of those people involved in some of the bad stuff were not even truly Texans. One of the things that's really griped me for years is the fact that the Bush family, uh, they say, well, Claims they're from Texas. Well, they're Texas oil men. No, no, no. They came from Connecticut. They're just Yankee carpetbaggers. <laughs> and you're right. Texas has always had a military history that we should be proud of. Uh, I know during the late great uh, war between the states, it was Robert E. Lee, one of the most famous generals in the world. He said, when the going gets tough, I call on my Texans. And I, unfortunately, you know, today we've all gotten fat and soft and, and easy, but I think it's time to buckle down and pay attention. To well, I mean, just look how much Texas has given the globalist resistance. Yeah. And then look at how the feds are cutting off the funding, everything that comes from our money anyways. But we're creating a gold bullion repository. <laughs> Texas just took its gold back. I'm telling you, <laughs> Texas is special. We're taking, we're taking a few steps now. And we need to keep going. All right, let's get into your book when we come back. It's good to see you. Tom flies, brother. <laughs> Too much time. You're awesome. Here we go. We're here. Jim Mars is our guest. In the next segment, I'm going to ask him what the globalist endgame is. And does he agree that he's got a weird feeling like everybody else does and that things are coming to a head? But I haven't read your book yet. I've scanned over it. It looks like a page turner. I'm going to read it on the airplane over to Spain uh, next week. But population control, how corporate owners are killing us. Jim Mars, best-selling author. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. What do you want to tackle first about the premeditated plan to kill us and make money off doing it? Well, I, I think the key thing here is you've got to understand, and I use quotes from many people, uh, and I chart the, uh, their activities. We've got a short segment here, so I'll just put it in a nutshell. Take your time. So we can go okay. to the next. The, this, is all, this ties into everything issue that you deal with, Alex, and all the people who follow you. This has gone beyond politics. This has gone beyond philosophy or debate. This is self-defense. These people want you dead, and uh, they're working at it. And uh, if you care anything about the safety and well-being of your family, your loved ones, you better read my book, you better study, you better listen to Alex, and you better find out what they're doing to you so that you can have a countermeasure. So you've researched it deeply, and that's, I mean, they're just open. It's like Bayer knowingly putting HIV for 10 years in hemophiliac's blood product, and then it came out, they knew it and liked it. Well, let me quote from Prince Philip, uh, a leading globalist, okay, the head of the Windsors over there in England. He says, um, if I'm reincarnated, I would like to come back as a deadly virus to help solve the overpopulation problem. That's right. In other words, he wants to kill us. Now, how about he goes first? Uh, yeah, that's what I say. Uh, let him take the first step. But it, it, and but here's the whole thing. It's all based on a phony premise. All these globalists, you, Bill Gates, uh, you know, uh, ten, Warren Buffett, Ten Turner, Warren Buffett. You listen to any of them, they'll tell you that the overriding problem in the world today is overpopulation. Too many people. OK, now, if you live in a big city and you have to put up with the noise, the traffic, the pollution, it's pretty easy to fall into that. Yeah, there's just too many people using up all the resources. But if you look at it coolly and logically and let's look right now today in Hong Kong, the average living space is seventeen hundred square feet. Hey, if you had an apartment, seventeen hundred square feet, that's 
pretty decent size. It's bigger than most of the apartments I lived in. And based on 1,700 square feet, the entire 7.5 billion population of the world could live comfortably enough just in the state of Texas. That's true, and I've seen those statistics. But the West is dying and has a problem. We're having 1.3 children on average for two adults. you got to have 2.1 to even replace and take care of the folks or economies collapse. We know this. The third world is growing fast. They have dirty technologies. It is causing some problems, but they're suppressing, as you know, you've written books on it, a lot of advanced technologies that would have taken us out of this. Right. None the, none the least of which would be to pursue and move on into space, as we heard about when we were kids. Hey, Plus, humans need a goal. We'll, yeah. We're go to the moon. We're going to mine minerals. It'll pay for the space problem. We're going to have colonies on Mars, and we keep going. But and then you'd have to be a fan of humanity and not write us off. <laughs> That's right. And and it's hard enough to control this world, <laughs> much less if you go into others. You wanted to get into glyphosate. You, you, I, I said, what's the most important thing in your book? And you said glyphosate. Uh, glyphosate, uh, even, uh, even the World Health Organization now has admitted that glyphosate is a carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. But uh, what I'd like to point out is that uh, they've showed that the rise of glyphosate use, which is the major ingredient of Roundup, which is the Monsanto herbicide, which they are putting now on all of our important food crops, soy, corn, uh, wheat, and uh, you can draw a parallel rise between the rise of the use of glyphosate and the rise of autism in children, which has just gone out. You know, of that's shocking. Uh, I'm no chemist, but you mean lots of weed poison, hundreds of billions of tons being used a year, 400 billion tons a year now being used in every water table, weed Weed killer might not be good for our brains. Well, gee, I, poison, uh, and, you know. It's, whoa, that's a conspiracy uh, theory. Uh, but now, I'll tell you, you want something shocking. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Sinnott, a, uh, a MIT research scientist who says that there is a definite link between glyphosate and autism. Definite link that crap stinks, yeah. Yeah, and she says that uh, by 2025, that's just 10 years from now, she said at current rates, every other child. Yep will be autistic. Well, I think that's, that's a good, I mean, thank you, New World Order. Yeah, well, and from their standpoint, that's pretty good because, hey, it'd be easy. By the way, that's only 10 years away. <laughs> I know. And then half the new kids will be retarded. Yep. And they're like, oh, don't use the word retarded, but it's okay to kill them. <laughs> it's okay to brain damage them, just use the politically correct term. Okay, let me be correct. They're going to be seriously mentally disabled. <laughs> right. Now can we talk about... But it's okay. I mean, it's okay because they'll vote Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you're something else. Uh, Jim Mars is our guest. Stay with us. By the way, Jim Mars is going to host the show. I told everybody that for about six years, I've been doing the show 20. It's been syndicated for 18 and a half. But for about 18 plus years, I've been on from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And for about five years, six years, it's about five and a half years, I did a fourth hour. But when I started doing the nightly news and getting a lot of crew members under me and have a lot of administrative stuff and research stuff, I shifted and stopped doing the fourth hour because it was just killing me. I mean, I literally had to go take a nap for like an hour afterwards. Three hours kills me, too. I think it's the bright lights or whatever. When I do it, the show at home every once in a while, and it's dark, I just feel great when I go forever. It, it is. Kind of, I'm actually thinking about sometimes just doing the show from home and having anchors in here that are covering the news. Just because people say that sometimes when it's not even video, they say, man, the show's even better when it's just old-fashioned radio. Maybe a day a week or something, I'm going to start doing that in the future. But long story short, absolutely. Uh, but uh, long story short, um, Jim Mars is going to be hosting 30 minutes of the next hour by himself in here. He's a great guy, smart guy. He can do the whole fourth hour if he wants because a lot of stations want that fourth hour. We are going to start having it be a guest host hour. I'll host it a lot of times as well. We'll have roundtable discussions. It'll be a news hour. It'll be really something special every day. That fourth hour, we're bringing it back. And some stations never turned it off when I quit doing uh, four hours two years ago. A lot of stations still carry it. So Jim Mars will be doing as much of the as much of the uh, fourth hour as he wants. In fact, I I predict you'll want to do the whole thing, cupcake. Uh, so 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 that's coming up. And if you want, you can give the number out and take calls. But yeah, uh, before I do that, we have to self fund here. And I simply go out and whatever I use, what I like, what I think's neat is what I end up trying to go out to the distributor, to the manufacturer and get. 
G-Shock watches are the original tough watches, so they're the most state-of-the-art and the most updated today. Military uses them. Everybody knows that. And they're also very, very affordable compared to other watches that don't even have the same tolerances. We now have a wide selection. We're adding them right now to InfoWarsStore.com of the G-Shock family. Uh, we have this distributorship through Head Down, uh, so we're now directly drop shipping through them. And we're carrying the Vortex Viper uh, at the lowest price you'll find anywhere, uh, optics, uh, and just so many others. And, and this thing is owned by former Special Forces, uh, Army, Navy SEALs, armorers, uh, laser sights, green laser sights, uh, AIM Titans, uh, Surefire, uh, all the very best stuff that is at the best price. Uh, just guaranteed no games for your assault rifle, for your handgun, for your revolver. It's all there, InfoWarsStore.com. You go over on the right-hand side, and you'll see InfoWars Life, made in 1776, health and wellness, coffee, water purification, preparedness products, seed center, uh, books, uh, current specials, clearance, discounts, longevity, prisonplanet.tv, head down products, and now at the bottom, optics. So optics, watches, all the hardware you need, that way you get a great price, and the small profit that's there, which it was huge profit, we could fund things easier, then helps fund the reporters, the research, the work we're doing. Infowarsstore.com or Infowarslife.com, where you can go and find all of our high-quality supplements. And there are a ton of them. Uh, the latest, of course, is the deep cleanse known to cleanse out the body, Shilogy and other key compounds like zeolites, Knock out an amazing sleep aid where we just put all the best, purest stuff known to knock you out, better than a hammer. Uh, that's there. Believe me, I've taken other sleep aids that are natural. They help a little. Melatonin, uh, valerian, i got to take them together. This, I'm going to be taking this tonight about 10 o'clock because i get up early tomorrow and do a bunch of stuff. And the thing is, I just, I just keep wound up. Even if I had that coffee since like noon, I just want to stay up till 2, 3 in the morning. And then I'm exhausted when my kids get up at 6, 30, 7 in the morning. Well, I can take knockout, and within an hour, man, I am sleeping deep, and I don't wake up. Even if the dog or the cat's jumping on me or the kids try to come in or th thunder and lightning or whatever. So InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free. We're going to answer all your questions about optics, about watches, about shortwave radios, cook stoves, water filters. It's basically I'm a guy, I, you know, I, don't get me near a Cabela's. Don't get me near a, a hardware store. I'll be in a little town, see a little gun shop or a little hunting supply shop. I'm, I'm in there. Well, this is the very best stuff, and then you're not just getting some fun stuff for your for your cabin or your vacation house or your garage or your truck or presents for your kids, your husband or whatever. You're funding a hardcore liberty operation while getting your rifles ready for hunting or self-defense or whatever the case is. So it's all available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, you have the floor and get practiced because you're going to be hosting the next hour, and you'll have some breaks to get up and go to the go to the Tinkle area, but... Uh, Jim Mars, my good buddy, best-selling author, is here in the new book, Population Control. And this is a book I can really get behind. You've had a lot of other amazing books, but I kind of know about JFK because I read your book 25 years ago. And you can write a book about the rise of the Nazis and how the Fourth Reich's connected to us. And I kind of know that. A lot of folks don't. This new book, I was reading through it, got a lot of stuff I didn't know, and it really puts it all together for the case. We ought to sell this ourselves. We don't yet. We sell a lot of your books and dovetail it with Endgame. Because my film Endgame covers a lot of this as well, that their Endgame is take over, shut off the resources, and kill everybody. So, Jim Mars, people can go to your website and also get the book. Give them your website. Website, uh, oddly enough, is jimmars.com. J-I-M-M-A-R-R-S, two R's and Mars. A good Scottish name. Aye, correct, you are. You, can you do a Scottish accent for me? Uh, uh, no. We there are buckins coming. I can't even do it. Foot, <laughs> Oh my! I don't gosh. know. I think I lost my Scottish accent. Uh, <laughs> you you look like a Scottish guy, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Speaking <laughs> of, did you hear where there's a famous pub in Scotland, and the managers announced they have a new policy that they're making the uh, waiters wear pants because <laughs> this is true, really, because too many women were coming in and trying to pull up their kilts <laughs> to see what they were wearing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, at first it was funny, he said. But I hear women go after the Scots <laughs> oh, yeah. guilt. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing feminine about it. I mean, you know, it's it's comfortable. Manly kilts. 
Absolutely. And then, then I, I could wear a kilt. 